It's one of the most popular swaps in four-wheeling. IFS to a solid axle. Today on Extreme 4x4, step-by-step how-to on this Toyota Mini. We're off to Tucson for a look at one of the first modern crawlers. And later in the show, Jesse's back. Hey guys, welcome to Extreme 4x4 and the build up that I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for. Based on the number of emails we get into the show and the number of people that stop us on the street to give us their list of project ideas, this is number one, the Toyota Mini Truck. To say that the Mini Truck has influenced trail riding is an understatement. They've been around since 1979 and when they were first released, they had a solid axle front suspension and a true gear transfer case Everything you'd find in a full-size truck but in a smaller package could go more places. But alas, good things have to come to an end when a truck like this becomes too popular for its own good and engineers decide to put IFS inside the front end to improve it for the daily drivers. Now, independent front suspension, great for commuters, hardcore wheeling, <laughs> not so much. This 1991 Toyota SR5 will be transformed from an IFS comfortable daily commuter truck into a hardcore solid axle trail monster. We're stripping the bed off to perform two popular body mods, a bob and a dovetail. Now you can see the rear frame section on this truck extends past the rear swing shackle mount to hold up the bed as well as the bumper. The problem is this can get hung up on obstacles when you're coming off them or backing up them. So we're basically going to cut the frame section off here and then shorten the bed to match. That's called a bob. Now at the same time, we'll cut a pie section out of the bed floor and bring the back side of the bed sides in to meet this frame width. That's called a dovetail. The dovetail makes the truck narrower at the back, so when you're driving through the woods, if you have an obstacle on the tire, chances are it'll just carry on. It won't get rammed up into the bedside. Hang you up. With the frame supported, I'm going to cut it two inches ahead of the swing shackle mount. Then a new bumper is made from 3 16th 2x4 structural steel with a new upper shackle mount made from an Evolution machine and fab stage joint. This will improve articulation on the rear axle. I'm going to cut the taillight sections out in order to graft them onto the new shorter bedside before cutting 16 inches out of the bed length. These modifications will help the truck squeeze into places and keep the truck's tires on the rocks instead of the body panel. Now narrowing the front end of a truck is just as popular as dovetailing the rear and depending on your make and model will determine if it's a hard job or an easy one. Domestic trucks like full-size Chevys, K5 Blazers, and Dodges, the fender and the inner fender are all bolted onto the radiator support. So you simply have to unbolt everything, move it around, pull the fender in. It's that easy. Import trucks like our Toyota, the radiator support, the inner fender are all welded onto the cab. So if you're going to narrow a truck like this, it's going to be a little bit more work. But that's what we're going to do right now. This is a little overkill. We could honestly run this truck without narrowing the front end, and most Toyota guys do. Getting all this sheet metal out of the way will help with the next few modifications. When this truck showed up, the motor was making some serious noise. We might want to fix that. Now, the timing chain is broken, it will not start. And really, I have no idea how much damage is done without completely tearing it apart. Now, if this was a four-cylinder truck and we had a bad motor, it would honestly be worth rebuilding. Those are great motors when you're running off-road. Now, the three-liter V6 is not everyone's first choice. It has a lot of small problems with it. It goes through head gaskets quite regularly because the aluminum head and cast iron block expand at different rates and tears the gasket. It's known to use a lot of water pumps and those aren't cheap to replace, and the fuel mileage is not that hot. Now, behind the engine, 
We have a standard transmission. I'm not a huge fan of running a stick off-road. It's just honestly personal preference. I find it a lot harder to climb hills. Now behind the standard, we have a chain-driven transfer case. That is definitely not our first choice. If you run on a Toyota, you want the gear-driven unit. It's easy to tell them apart because the back cover on a gear drive has seven bolts. On a chain drive like this, it has five. If we had a gear-driven unit, it would be worth keeping the back half of this drivetrain because we could double it down and get a lot better off-road use. But to be honest with you, with something that's weak here, something that we don't like here, and this thing being broken, the best thing to do is replace the entire drivetrain with this. A GM Performance Parts Ramjet 350. Obviously, this will give us the benefit of having EFI out on the trail, which is great when you're off angle, but this 350 will give us a lot more power than we could ever pull out of that Toyota V6. Now behind it, we're gonna install a 700R4 automatic that we got from our local parts store. And the 700 is a great off-road automatic transmission because it's not very long and the first gear ratio is just over three to one. Now behind the transmission, we're gonna install a transfer case that's not here yet, but trust me, it's gonna be worth the wait. Now we're not gonna install any of this between the frame rails quite yet because without it in there, it makes our next modification easier and that is a solid axle swap. <laughs> Now the front suspension on our Toyota is pretty typical of IFS four-wheel drives in the 1990s. It has a simple upper and lower control arm and a two-wheel drive truck like this would have a spring on this bottom control arm for the suspension movement. But you can't do that on a four-wheel drive because obviously we have an axle to drive the wheel. So to get the spring in an IFS four-wheel drive, we use what's called a torsion bar. Now basically this is keyed into the upper control arm and then it's held stationary back in the frame. Now the twisting and untwisting of this torsion bar is actually what gives our suspension its spring. Now you've heard of guys running up their torsion bars to get a little bit more lift, there's an adjustment bolt on the back end and they simply tighten it to twist the torsion bar and therefore raise the suspension up. The limitation of this system is it really limits the amount of wheel travel you can get because you can only twist this bar so far. Now here's a little tip for you. The next time you see someone doing a solid axle swap on a Toyota, take the torsion bars from them because you can use these as a low buck sway bar in the back of your next link buggy. Up next, a cure for boredom in the Arizona desert. We got a winner! Yeah! We're taking a break from our solid axle swap on our Toyota to take you inside our window to the off-road world. This week, <laughs> the Southwest Desert, where rocks rule. Once a year, hundreds of four-wheelers come out to the Arizona desert for the Tucson Trail Dust Days. It is a pretty big event. We have very scenic, real nice two-wheel drive trails all the way up to these level five real extreme trails. The most popular spot isn't even a trail. It's a rock. We're out here at Charlotte Gap and we're about 30 miles outside of Tucson. It's got a lot of fun rocks similar to Moab to go play on. Charlotte Gap has lots of granite like this that's pretty slippery, and it's just a good place to come out and play. Even those without a rig were loving the gap. We call it the terrible Tucson turnover competition between Mitch and Rich. Richard Beeman grew up here and is the defending rollover champion. Nothing like getting out and hitting the rocks and rolling your rig over. It's just what I built it for. And from the great state of Vermont was the challenger, Mitch Burke. There's a little bit of nerves involved, but when you compete snowboarding, it's not a big deal. After all the pre-bout height, these heavyweights were ready for the showdown in the desert. Rollover Rich was first up and didn't disappoint his fans. Yeah! That's how we roll out here. That's the way to do it. Rich's rollover, I give it an eight. I'm gonna have to say it was a good seven. It's pretty good. He got up the side hill and I didn't think it was gonna go over. Mitch wasn't thinking about pressure only strategy. I'm looking to uh, hit the obstacle perpendicular, maybe turn the tires to the right. Who knows, we'll see what happens. At <laughs> this showdown, the underdog shot blanks. Underneath, we broke the pinion off, sheared it right off from the main bearing on the end. 
Trail Carnage, we broke something. It's all about the effort that counts. The spectators wanted more than effort. I give it a two since it technically wasn't a rollover. We got a winner! Yeah! I'm really happy to be the hometown guy and come out and win one for the fans. When it comes to four-wheeling, Dwayne Jungen isn't interested in youthful tomfoolery. Well, the reason I got hooked on four-wheeling is it's a type of sport where it's just you and your machine against the world. He fights this epic battle between good and evil with a rig many consider to be the first modern crawler. In its debut in 1997, it was listed as uh, the state-of-the-art off-road vehicle and credited as starting the rock buggy craze. A decade later, Sonny Honinger's revolutionary design continues to dominate the rocks. Even after 10 years, it's amazing that the suspension works as well as it does and the vehicle does as well as it does on these new trails. The key to its longevity has been a unique air suspension system. It has dual airbags on the front axle that equalize each other. The suspension is connected by a set of linkages that transfers weight through the chassis diagonally. It maintains even pressure on all four tires, independent of axle deflection. It's a little bit different driving style but it works very well. And it's a style that fits Dwayne's off-roading philosophy. I kind of believe in the ballet uh, on rocks philosophy. Make it look easy. Ballet isn't easy, and neither is the rock at Charlotte's Gap. Anything built can be broke, and no amount of engineering can overcome the laws of physics. You can always have a good day, but sooner or later, Murphy and the rock gods show up, and you've got issues. Later on, our co-host returns from back surgery. See how Jesse's doing when Extreme 4x4 continues. Welcome back to Extreme 4x4 and the middle of our Toyota mini truck build. Now, so far, we've shortened and narrowed the bed on this pickup and pulled the entire drivetrain to replace with a Ramjet 350. And right now, I'm in the middle of a solid axle swap. It took about three hours to cut off all the IFS brackets and grind the frame rail smooth. And we could put on a coat of paint to keep it from rusting. Now, when you're talking about Toyota parts, one name always comes up, and that is Marlin Crawler. They've been servicing the Toyota rock crawling community since 1994, so we knew that was the place to go for our solid axle swap kit. Now, you can do a solid axle swap without a kit, but really, it's worth the money, because not only do you get all the brackets, bump stops, U-bolts, new flex lines, swing shackles, you also get a high steer kit. You get wheel spacers because the newer Toyota IFS axles are actually wider. And we're putting in an older axle, so this will match up the track front and rear. You get shock hoops, four new Bilstein shocks. And then to match the height of our front to the rear, we're going to also be installing a Marlin Crawler 4-inch leaf spring lift. Now, these multi-pack leaf springs actually flex really good when we're out on the trail, which is what we're after in this truck. All we have to do now is take all this and put it on that truck. Use a C-clamp to support the front spring hanger even with the front edge of the truck's frame. With it centered right to left, it can be welded into place and then the supplied gussets installed. A template is used to locate the swing shackle mount with it centered between the body mount plates. Slide the frame tubes inside the frame so they're even on both sides. Then push them a quarter inch further to the outside and weld them in place. Hang your new springs off the front mount and raise them up to the rear swing shackle. In the rear, remove the axle assembly along with the stock springs. The new springs are longer, so new front mounts are welded to the frame and the new leaves are bolted in place. Now, any Toyota axle out of a 79 to 85 pickup or 4Runner will work in this solid axle swap. Now, this particular junkyard find is from a 1983. Now, you can tell that because it has this gusset that runs from the pumpkin to just short of the driver's side spring perch. Now, the 84 and 85 axle assemblies have that same gusset running all the way to the end of the tube. Those gussets actually add strength to the housing itself. 
Now we're going to go ahead and install this underneath the front of our Toyota so we can finish up the solid axle swap. But we're definitely not going to leave these things in stock trim before this truck hits the trail. With the housing in place, we can install the upper shock hoops. We'll use the shock to make sure that the mount is directly over the axle. And we can go ahead, weld in each hoop. You want to have five inches of shock shaft exposed with the weight of the truck on the axle. Yet to come, look who's back. Jesse returns to Extreme next. Now there's no question that a Toyota axle all by itself from the factory is a very stout unit. But go ahead and add a small block Chevy like we have, an aftermarket transfer case like we planned to, and 37 inch tires, and you've reached these axles limits. Now you don't have to do everything that we've done here today to turn your Toyota mini truck into a great trail machine. You could just do a solid axle swap, leave it stock, run on 33 inch tires, do the engine upgrade later if you wanted to, and the transfer case upgrade when you have the cash. Most guys who build a truck like this would spend almost two years doing it bumper to bumper in small steps. But I know you guys don't want to wait two years to see that thing on the trail, and I'm not waiting two years to drive it. So we're going to do all the axle upgrades in one shot, and it's going to start right here. Alloy USA Precision Gear 529s in the front and rear mounted on Detroit Locker lockers. Now the Detroit Locker is a great standalone unit because we don't have to add anything else like a compressor or an electrical source to control the locking action. In the rear, Poly Performance 4340 axle shafts. The tapered and polished design as well as rolled splines make these the strongest axles for the Toyota Mini truck. The front will also be using Poly Performance 4340 chrome molly axles and their upgraded Burfield joint. It has a redesigned cage that makes them 30% stronger at full lock, which is usually where a Burfield joint fails. And then the last piece of the puzzle is a PSC tap steering box that allows us to run a 6 inch ram mounted on the front axle to take the effort out of turning these large tires. Now you've seen us install many gears and axle upgrades in pretty much all of our projects. So I'm going to go ahead and do all this tomorrow. Well, look who decided to come back to work. Who says breaking my back has to keep me down forever, huh? Well, it's good to have you back. How you feeling? I'm feeling really good, feeling really good. I'm going through all my physical therapy and it's getting harder and harder every day, but in the same turn, it feels really good to actually be doing something and moving and because being in bed for three months sucks. I could think of something to do, but anyway. <laughs> um, and uh, when are you back full time? I actually am coming back next week, but I'm still on super duper heavy restrictions. No lifting, no bending, no twisting. So you're still going to have to hold all the weight of doing all the work. As usual. <laughs> <laughs>